do you live? Physically, but philosophically. So me, physically, St. Louis, Boston, Chicago, New York, and about 10 years ago, back here to St. Louis. Philosophically, there's the place that I think I should live, the place that's comfortable, and then that famed, uncomfortable place where all the good stuff happens. I've always been a maker of things. Uh, theater, storytelling, technology, anything. I've always had my hands in something all the time, but it wasn't until a couple years ago that I kind of got turned on to the secret sauce, which is that it's not quality or quantity. It's the byproducts that come from the making. And there was one project in particular that really turned me on to that. It all started with an email from a friend of mine, pretty much apropos of nothing. I want to do this, he says. I think your company and my company should collaborate, you know, with all the free time that we have. So we found the one person with less free time than we had, and miraculously, we were able to schedule a brainstorming meeting. So what's a sukkah, some of you are saying? A sukkah is an ancient Judaic structure which you may have seen pop up in backyards or balconies on the Upper West Side during the, ho during the Jewish holiday of Sukkot. With lots of rules and regulations, the sukkah symbolizes the 40 years the Jews wandered the desert and the temporary structures that they built under which to eat, live, and sleep at night. In 2010, a modern design competition reimagined the sukkah in New York's um, Union Square. So in 2011, the Sam Fox School of Design and Hillel here at Washington University had a vision for St. Louis's own sukkah city to be installed at the center of campus. So with a mere 23 days before our submission deadline, a Jew, a black woman, and a guy from South City walked into a Thai restaurant and discussed all things sukkah. Now, not only did our design have to follow a bunch of ancient rules, it also was supposed to explore the boundaries of humanity and individualism while also sparking a conversation on architecture and design. Right. Um, so it became very quickly that despite our different backgrounds, the architect, the artist, and the producer were on the same wavelength. All of our ideas quickly sort of coalesced around the thoughts of interactivity, community, storytelling, flexibility. We wanted people to be able to interact with the structure and to leave something behind. Our resulting design was a modular structure made up of openings of one, two, and three cubits, an ancient measure, in which people would find what we called story cubes. The cubes would have questions on them, we'd leave out sharpies, people would pull out the cubes, answer the questions, move them around, done. So with a small miracle and a bunch of extra hands and brains, we got our renderings together and submitted them on time, and we were really proud. Everybody who was involved in the project really kind of felt that something special had happened. That first phase would have been enough to so clearly articulate on paper those ideas we threw out that first day was amazing. So when we found out we were one of 10 of 40 submissions worldwide chosen, I did some serious happy dancing. Now, one of the reasons that that first phase would have been enough is that we hadn't actually thought about how we would build this or how much we would pay for it. But there have been plenty of jokes about the t-shirts and the social media handles. So one Pixel Jew Kickstarter video later, we were well on our way. We had a local construction company that chipped in with at-cost labor. We found a local sign company to do the decals for the questions. And we found a third generation uh, custom wood shop that built the cubes for us. And no project is complete without a bunch of trips to Home Depot. And as these things do, especially on a compressed timeline, everything came together. Now on build day, we worked from about noon until eight o'clock at night. And when we were done, we took turns lying up on the ground, staring up into the sky, just marveling that we'd done it, we made it. Like lifelong award-winning architects lying on the ground, marveling at this 10 by 12 foot structure made of wood and metal and hemp. And then the people came and they wrote. And not just on the cubes, and that surprised us. We hadn't anticipated, but it made perfect sense. On every reachable and writable surface, they wrote. They left messages for us. They left messages for each other. They left messages for themselves. They reflected. They confessed. They made something new out of this thing that we'd made. Now, food and music are central to the holiday of Sukkot. So ever since the first meeting, I'd been yammering about programming. But it wasn't until we had the thing built that Ben turned to me and said, dude, we should have a music festival. So I'm not quite sure I would call it a festival, but two very popular St. Louis bands did make an appearance in the sukkah that week, in addition to many lunches and even a staff meeting. On one of the last days that week that the sukkah stood, despite the fact that it was cold and rainy, I went to South Grand and got some takeout Ethiopian, drove to campus, somehow getting lost in Maplewood, and made it to the sukkah just in time for the rain to stop and the sun to come out. And I ate alone, and I felt the meeting of the minds and the hands that had gone into the making of this thing. 
We tore down the physical space, but the byproducts, the connections, the reconnections that were made in the making of this thing still reverberate today, none of which we could have articulated when we sat down at that table. By saying yes, by showing up, by diving deep into the process, we had created or perhaps stepped into a philosophical place. There's a lot of conversation happening around town these days about a lack of connection, a lack of solutions. People feel isolated in their passion and desire for a connected, forward-looking, healed St. Louis. But the mere existence of those conversations are an indication that we're well on our way. We are really uncomfortable right now. The difference between the St. Louis that we have and the St. Louis that we want is us our perspective, our ability to choose a community of yes and instead of no but. So the next time you're surprised or inspired by an email out of nowhere or a tough conversation on Facebook, don't dismiss it. Don't claim lack of time, lack of knowledge, lack of responsibility. Lean into it, whatever that means. A like, a dollar, a collaboration, or even just speaking up. Between that place that you and others think you should be and that place that feels comfortable where you only know all the things you've ever known is a magic place where minds meld and solutions are found. So go to the Thai restaurant, sit down, draw something lofty with big goals, follow your passion and ignore all of the timetables and the, and the, and the tools and be open to where it takes you. We get to a different tomorrow by doing something differently today. So get uncomfortable. And I'll see you in that uncomfortable place where all the good stuff happens and we can learn that the intangible and the tangible realities can be one if we choose to make uncomfortable the new normal. <laughs>